Good afternoon. I'm very sorry that I can't be with you today. I'm coming to you from London. I was preparing to leave for the train station yesterday afternoon and a, I tested positive for COVID and I've been sick in bed ever since. Um, I want nevertheless to share a few of my thoughts on the, this the subject. Um, before I begin, I want to congratulate Javed Raymond on his very successful mandate and special rapporteur. I think he's done a great job, and I would only add that I think it's unfortunate that his final report appears to have been buried in the UN computer somewhere. It is accessible, but it doesn't have a UN document number, at least the last time I looked. Um, I gather this is a result of pressure from the government. There are two uh, ideas that are floating around or that are being proposed as ways to move forward on this issue. The first is through universal jurisdiction. Um, the universal jurisdiction uh, has attracted a great deal of attention uh, for many years as a way to deal with impunity. Um, I think that in general, it has tended to generate more heat than light. The results have not been very substantial and that the pathway to international justice has been much more effective with international tribunals uh, like the Yugoslavia and Rwanda tribunals in the International Criminal Court. Of course, they have limited jurisdiction uh, and so they're not able to get at all um, examples of atrocity crimes that we have in the world in recent years and in recent decades. The uh, Swedish uh, government has been a bit of a poster child for universal jurisdiction. And I think that it's then very disgraceful uh, that we see that it has been abused and manipulated for political purposes as what amounts to a form of prisoner exchange a very cynical gesture by the Swedish government um, uh, that I think underscores the, the the politicized nature also of the exercise of universal jurisdiction. So while of course I'm not opposed to it being used effectively, I think that it's uh, uh, its results have been have been thin in practice, and the recent uh, decision by Sweden shows that it can be manipulated politically in the most cynical of of ways. The other, um, I think, more positive uh, way forward is through commissions of inquiry under the auspices of the Human Rights Council of the United Nations. Of course, this requires a considerable amount of political support uh, within the Human Rights Council to do this. But there have been a long series now of commissions of inquiry, fact-finding commissions with different names set up by the Human Rights Council. Uh, a decade ago, I was a chair of one of these dealing with uh, an earlier conflict in Gaza. And um, they are uh, composed usually of three um, independent and impartial experts. There's a large pool of people who can be drawn upon to do this job. And they issue reports that have a very high degree of credibility and that have also been shown to be extremely influential even before bodies like the International Court of Justice when there is litigation that concerns the same issue. So uh, in my uh, humble opinion, the, the best way forward is to attempt to establish a commission of inquiry. I just want to conclude by welcoming the new special rapporteur, May Sato, uh, someone with whom I've worked for many, many years, um, really uh, confined to issues relating to the global abolition of capital punishment. She's a very fine uh, and energetic scholar, and I'm sure that she's going to uh, deliver a great deal to the, to the mandate. Thank you.